What's up guys, it's Wally, and today we're going to be talking about the competitive play trailer for Scarlet and Violet that Nintendo released just a few days ago at Worlds. So if you guys did end up missing Worlds, not only did you miss an incredible set of battles, but you guys also missed this competitive play trailer for Scarlet and Violet in the next generation. Not only did this give us a closer look at Terrastalizing, which is a new gimmick, uh, which is going to be replacing Dynamax, but it also gave us a closer look at a new Pokemon, a couple new moves, and also a few new items that can be used in competitive play. And a lot of these could actually have big implications for competitive play in the next generation. So we'll go through the trailer a little bit and we'll also talk about these things. But before we do, as always, if you guys are new here, or just haven't yet, please make sure to go down and hit the subscribe button. If you guys do enjoy the video, please make sure to drop a like too. But let's get into this trailer because there is a lot of incredible things that you guys possibly missed in this trailer. So first of all, let me actually take off my camera. That way I'm not blocking anything because I think some text is in a couple of the corners and I wanna make sure that I don't block those for you guys. So. I'm going to take off the camera here uh, and we're going to get into the trailer a little bit. So I am going to keep the video kind of kind of muted just so I'm able to kind of talk and and all that. I think it's just really backing music and all that kind of stuff. But um, but I want to make sure that I'm not really kind of talking over anything or anything like that. But you know, as you can see, this is kind of like what the battle format's going to be and what it's going to going to kind of look like when you're uh, when you're in battle. First of all, here is the first thing. It's the brand new Pokemon. So this is Cyclozar or Cyclozer? Because I know it's a lizard and a cycle and all that, but it's either Cyclozar or Cyclozer. We'll kind of see, I guess, maybe when the anime comes out. But it's a really, really cool looking Pokemon. Uh, to me, it kind of looks like a pre-evolution to the two legendaries. You know, kind of like what like Cosmog was in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon to uh, both Solgaleo and Lunala. Uh, or at the very least, maybe it's like the the present, you know, in the past, present, future type of thing with the legends. Because, you know, you have one of them being in the past, one being in the future. And this one here is, you know, the one in the present. But, you know, it's also a dragon normal typing, which is really awesome. I'm a big fan of dragon typing. But it is only the second Pokemon with that combination behind Drampa. Uh, I think it's going to be really interesting to uh, kind of see its stats... Uh, if it evolves, its abilities, uh, and even if it's rideable, like the legendaries, you know? Uh, but for now, really, we can only speculate. But along with the look and typing of this new Pokemon, they also introduced a new move that Cyclers are, can uh, end up using. This new move is called Shed Tail. Uh, right now, I, I think it's really unknown if it's going to be an exclusive move to the new Pokemon or if others can learn it. Uh, if I had to guess... I would say that uh, it'll be known by a handful of other Pokemon, but with how great this move really seems to be, um, I can't really imagine that there would be, you know, that they were given to a, like a ton of Pokemon. Um, at least not as many as can learn like actual Substitute. Uh, the comparison to Substitute really is because of what the move actually does. So as you can see, you know, Shed Tail allows the Pokemon to set up a Substitute. However, it also allows it to swap places with another Pokemon in your party. This comes obviously at a greater cost, as you can see, as it takes away about 50% of your HP instead of the 25% like a normal substitute would. This creates a lot of interesting situations, of course. Uh, if the Pokemon using it is, you know, kind of a quick Pokemon, could use it as a way to kind of get a free switch in to another Pokemon without worrying about that Pokemon really kind of taking any damage. Um, another interesting situation is if it's a bulky, slow Pokemon uh, that kind of knows the move. Uh, it would allow it so that the Pokemon could set up the substitute and kind of switch out and guarantee uh, as long as it's, you know, has a full 50% HP to be able to, you know, set up that substitute. Uh, but it would guarantee that the new Pokemon that would switch in would start the next round or the next turn with the substitute. So this could really work in both a trick room if, you know, you want to bring in a Trick Room Sweeper and have it, you know, kind of have a uh, substitute in the back as well. Um, or if you're in normal conditions and you just want your strongest Pokemon that might not have the greatest defense or special defense to kind of have an extra shield as it comes out. Either way, depending on the Pokemon uh, that end up getting this move and how, how easy it'll be to kind of keep them above that 50% HP threshold, I think it'll be an extremely useful move going forward in the next generation of competitive. And plus, you still get that awesome little decoy right there. 
But look, you can see that I'm kind of switching into Magna Zone. That's a really, really awesome thing to kind of have. So this next one is one of the is essentially the first of the three new items that they are uh, debuting in the new game. So as you can see, and let me kind of back it up here. So this one is called Mirror Herb. As you can see in the video, this item will allow you to copy the stat increases from the, oppo uh, the opponent's Pokemon across from you when consumed. So as you can see here with Satitan standing across from the Belly Drum Azumarill. So this could be really, really interesting item uh, to really, really use in competitive. Um, a lot of teams really do like to set up one of their Pokemon uh, to either kind of speed up, bulk up, or power up on the first turn. So to receive that same type of boost while not wasting a turn could be extremely helpful. I mean, imagine getting a, I mean, like a six stage attack boost without losing a turn or without losing half your HP. Dude, that would be a huge, huge turning point in that game. The downside, however, uh, is that, you know, of course, like all the other herbs, it only occurs once in the battle, and it's only the first time that an opponent boosts its stats in front of the Pokemon with uh, the Mirror Herb. So while this really does sound great in theory, uh, if you're trying to set up a Trick Room and the opponent in front of you is boosting up their speed for some reason, you don't really want that speed boost. Or if you're a special attacker and the opponent in front of you ends up belly drumming, you know, you don't want that six stage physical attack boost, especially if you're only like loaded with special attacks. So the belly drum would essentially be useless. So uh, it takes a lot of strategy to kind of set up. So unless you have a specific plan. So a plan that I think would be really, really interesting is if you have a really, really fast mon or a mon that has Scarf on it, you could use Swagger into one of your opponent's Pokemon uh, across from yours, uh, preferably like a physical attacker that's holding Mirror Herb. That way, while the opponent gets the two-stage boost, as well as the Confusion, you receive the same boost without the downside of the Confusion. So there are going to be a lot of like really, really crazy strategies with this item. So please, please be prepared. So next is really going to be a closer look at Terrastalizing. So as I said, this is going to be the new gimmick in the game, uh, which is going to replace Dynamaxing. Um, it honestly looks really, really cool. So as we learned from the previous trailer, um, it's going to allow a Pokemon to kind of change its typing. So the two examples that you see, like this one right here, uh, that I just kind of passed over a little bit, uh, essentially has Colossal there uh, changing into a move. I couldn't tell us exactly what that was. It essentially makes water moves not very effective. But of course, since it is still Colossal, it still has the ability of Steam Engine. So as you see here, uh, it ends up getting hit with the, uh, with the water move. Um, making it not very effective damage, however, affecting Steam Engine, um, thus making it extremely, extremely fast. And the other one that you'll see later in the video too is Tyranitar, which is typically a 4x weak uh, to fighting. However, it uh, terrestrializes, and this is going to be really hard for me to say throughout Generation 9, but it terrestrializes to a ghost type, thus making it immune to the fighting move that would typically one hit KO it. And in addition, uh, they did introduce a new move for terrestrialized Pokemon, but we'll get to that a little later because the next thing that they end up introducing is going to be another new item, as you can see here with Breloom. So the new item is going to be called Loaded Dice. So what this does is essentially is a weakened version of the ability skill link for Pokemon that don't get this ability. So, you know, you know, Cloyster is a Pokemon that gets skill link as an ability, which essentially makes it so that it's, uh, it's moves that hit more than one time in the same turn uh, has a greater chance, or essentially a guaranteed chance of hitting four or five times, which makes it extremely, extremely useful. This move, however, only makes it more likely to hit more times, thus giving you a better chance at hitting an opponent four or five times instead of two or three. While this sounds great, again, it doesn't guarantee a four or five hit move like Skill Link does. So you and I both may see some broken controllers in the future when Bullet Seed only hits twice while holding loaded dice. 
However, this could be a really, really interesting strategy with Pokemon like Breloom, since it does get the Technician ability, which powers up the lower powered move. So anything that is less than 60 power base for the move gets powered up. And that gives it, I think it's a 50% boost to those moves. So essentially, if Breloom is holding, uh, is holding the loaded dice, and does have the Technician ability, Bullet Seed, which typically does have a power of 25, will be 50% stronger. So if you do have loaded dice and you do get lucky, you do have that ability to get the four or five hits with a move that does have 37 and a half power every single time it hits. So if it hits five times, you know, five times 37 and a half, that's essentially almost like a hundred and almost, you know, close to 175 power just for that one turn. And in the fact that it could be super effective damage and you may have wiped out your opponent off the field. And if it does have sash, it'll get it down to its sash and it'll hit one more time and be able to knock it out. So I don't think it'll be an extremely common item that you'll see in competitive, but I think in certain situations, especially potentially with this Breloom uh, potential strategy right here. Uh, I think it's something that you might see in competitive, but like I said, probably not something that you're going to see uh, incredibly often. I actually think that this Breloom strat might actually be something that I might run next generation. I think that'd be a lot of fun, but then again, I really don't want to break my controller because I end up missing out on a, a potential four or five hit on that. But anyways, uh, like I said, this is kind of First of all, I, I want to point this out as well. Um, so, like I said, you're going to see uh, Tyranitar here terrestrialize into a Ghost-type Pokemon. But this little thing over Tyranitar's head here to signify that it is a Ghost-type terrestrialize um, looks just like the sprite that is from Generation 1 or... Um, I think it was also in uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green, as well as Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. But this is the same thing that signified uh, Cubone's mother, or I guess technically Marowak, uh, in those games when you get to the top of the tower in Lavender Town. I think that is a really, really cool callback to the first generation and to all those games that represented the first generation. Um, it just really, really made me happy when I saw it, I gotta say. And I, I even though I couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was, I, I recognized that right away. And again, that made me extremely happy. But also what you're going to see here, aside from Tyranitar basically uh, avoiding this because it is immune to the fighting type move that, would, that it would originally be four times weak to uh, because it does turn into a ghost type. But you will also see the new move for the terrestrialized Pokemon. And as we'll see, this new move is actually called, and I was going to wait until it came up on the screen, but it's called Terra Blast. So basically, it is a normal type move that changes typing based on what typing your terrestrialized Pokemon changes to. Um, it also has a really, really special quality that is that it changes the type of damage that it does based on your attack or special attack stat. Thus, if your Pokemon is stronger in special attack, it will become a special attack, or if it is more, uh, or if it has a higher physical attack, then it will do a physical move. Now, I don't know exactly what it would do if you have an even attack and special attack stat. Not that I would imagine a lot of people would have an equal stat for both, but I don't know how it would really calculate it based on that, but it would be interesting to see. But um, in addition to that, though, on Bulbapedia, it says that the move will become available as a TM, uh, but it doesn't say what the move will do if the Pokemon isn't terrestrialized, right? So uh, it'll be really exciting to see how it kind of interacts with non-terrestrialized Pokemon uh, and the power of it as it kind of comes in. Uh, and it's probably one of the more interesting components of the competitive in this generation. Don't get me wrong, I may be the only person that may miss Dynamaxing and all that kind of stuff, but still, I, I think this new gimmick is gonna be really, really great. 
But lastly, there is one more item that they didn't show in the trailer that Pokemon announced separately. Uh, and here, let me keep this up here so you can, guys can see this awesome new special Pikachu that can't be obtained through regular gameplay and it's just an early purchase bonus. But it is a new item that Pokemon announced separately from the trailer that is called Covert Cloak. So this is probably, to me, the most interesting item that they introduced and one that I could have really, really used in Sword Shield with all the fake out Pokemon running around as it protects the holder of the cloak from additional effects on moves. So this will allow Pokemon that don't have the ability Shield Dust, uh, which really is comprised of pretty much every useful Pokemon, uh, to avoid being flinched on a fake out. Which means that prankster Pokemon like Whimsicott and Grimmsnarl can set up their Tailwind and Screens without worry of flinching. Now I am aware that you can put out uh, like a DD to be able to set up a terrain to make it so that flinch is uh, not necessarily a thing of the past but not able to be run on that terrain. But this also has the really awesome ability to stop all of the other things as well. So that means that in addition, in addition to losing the effect of the flinch from fake out, uh, it will keep Pokemon safe from paralysis from thunder, burn from fire punch, freeze from ice beam, and extra effects like that. Uh, now this doesn't protect from moves like Thunder Wave or Will-O-Wisp since you know the status is the main function of that and it is a status move and not necessarily an attack with an extra effect. Uh, however, I think it will protect from the paralysis of Nuzzle, I think. I could be very, very wrong about that. If, if I am wrong and you guys know that for a fact, please let me know uh, because I don't want to give you wrong information. But either way, this item, I, I think, could be really a true game changer in the competitive scene. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if I saw this item on every team in the next generation. This trailer was less than two minutes long, but it presented us with a lot of information and new things to look forward to as we close in on the release of Scarlet and Violet in the next few months. What was your guys' favorite aspect of the trailer? What are you guys looking forward to the most in the next generation? Let me know down in the comments. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to go down and subscribe and drop a like, and we'll see you guys next time.